fans of the old Hollywood will remember Steve McQueen as one of the film industry's most iconic personalities. Popularly called the King of Cool, Steve's fame grew far beyond Hollywood throughout his career. Steve's on-screen escapades led him to be the highest paid actor in the world in the mid-1970s and a passion for cars resulted in a successful career as a race car driver, including competing in the 12 Hours of Sebring, where he finished second behind the legendary Mario Andretti. Steve McQueen's story has a humbler beginning than most people are aware of. Let's dive into how Steve went from having nothing to living a luxurious lifestyle. <laughs> Terrence Stephen McQueen was born in Beach Grove, Indiana on March 24, 1930. Steve grew up with his mother after his father, William, left them when he was just a toddler. Growing up was challenging for Steve as his mother, Julian, had to leave him with his great-granduncle, Claude Thompson, while she searched for greener pastures. Steve didn't have a proper discipliner because his great-granduncle was too old and his mother was gone. He eventually got into trouble and landed in a reform school, the California Junior Boys Republic in China. Life at California Junior Boys Republic was tough for Steve as he got accustomed to the school's lifestyle, but soon got used to it. Steve befriended a staff member and finally settled down. According to him, his experience at the school changed his life for good. After his education, Steve joined his mother in New York, but upon arriving, he discovered that his mother had put him in another apartment. Steve took off from his apartment to join the Merchant Marines briefly. Unfortunately, the job didn't work out, so he left the ship while it was docked in the Dominican Republic. Making it back to the United States was tough for Steve, as he had to work in a brothel as a towel boy to raise money, and after his return, he began a series of odd jobs, including working on oil rigs. In 1947, Steve enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps and became a tank driver. But Steve's rebellious acts came into play again when he ended up in trouble for extending a weekend pass into a two-week holiday. After being honorably discharged from the Marines in 1950, Steve spent some time in South Carolina and Washington, D.C. before returning to New York City. Steve seemed aimless, moving and changing jobs frequently. He discovered his calling with the help of a girlfriend who was also an aspiring actress. With support from Bill G.I., Steve enrolled at the Neighborhood Playhouse in 1951, and the rest is history. Steve had his first role as an actor soon after he was introduced to the industry. Although he had some setbacks, it was apparent that Steve had talents, and he won a scholarship to study at the Uta Hagen Herbert Berghoff School in 1952. A few years later, Steve was accepted to the prestigious actor's studio, where he studied with Lee Strasberg. Steve experienced his first taste of stardom in 1958 with the lead role of Steve Andrews in the sci-fi film The Blob, which became a cult classic. That year, he also headlined in the television western Wanted, Dead or Alive, as bounty hunter Josh Randall. The show became a huge hit, and Steve started attracting more Hollywood attention. In 1959, Steve starred in the crime drama The Great St. Louis Bank Robbery and also appeared with Frank Sinatra in the war drama Never So Few. Around this time, he discovered a passion for race car driving, which he did to earn big. In 1960, Steve had a leading role in the western The Magnificent Seven with Yul Brynner and Charles Bronson. His television show ended shortly afterward, allowing him to take on more film roles. With 1963's The Great Escape, Steve earned top billing, showing the world that he was a bona fide movie star, despite his career being heavily laden with controversies and a luxurious lifestyle. Steve's career peaked when he discovered his passion for racing and featured in some box office hits. Aside from his reckless lifestyle, Steve did himself a favor by investing heavily in assets like cars and houses. A 15.5-acre ranch near Santa Paula, California, situated about one and a half hours northeast of Los Angeles, is one of these estates. The property has a 4,500-square-foot hangar where Steve keeps his collection of automobiles and motorcycles. The property's proximity to the Santa Paula Airport, where Steve kept his Stearman Model 75 biplane, was another perk for Steve. 
Another of Steve's notable mansions is a multi-million dollar beachside home in Malibu. Steve bought this home to escape Hollywood life with his then-wife Ally McGraw. The home boasts panoramic views from Broad Beach to Point Doom. The residence is the epitome of beachfront bliss, with some of Southern California's best views from Broad Beach to Point Doom. Amongst his numerous car collection is a 275 GTB over 4, which he picked up after co-star Faye Dunaway drove one on the set of The Thomas Crown Affair and owned it for years despite being unable to decide whether he loved the car more as a coupe or convertible. The 275 GTB over 4 is one of the most awesome cars in Steve's garage. Steve's love for the Ford Mustang GT390 is second to none. He drove the car in the award-winning movie Bullet and fell in love with it. In the years following the film's 1968 release, Steve tried to purchase the exact car, but the owner refused to sell it, so he was forced to get a hold of a lookalike for his collection. Steve's garage also boasts a 1958 Porsche 1600 Super Speedster, his first sports car, which arguably set him down the path towards becoming a full-blown racing icon on the street and the track. Unlike many of Steve's highest-end cars, the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta Lusso model was designed as a luxurious Grand Tour. It was the fastest road-going production car in the world at the time of its release. At the height of Steve's track racing days, he raced the 1961 Cooper T56 Mark II car during the 1962 season. The car had raced successfully in 1961, tying for the Junior European Championship, and was powered by a 105-horsepower four-cylinder engine engine with a wheelbase of only 89 inches. Steve clearly loved Porsches throughout his civilian and race car driving life, but the Speedster would have nothing on the final Porsche he would own, a custom-ordered 1976 Turbo Carrera equipped with fuel injection, a non-intercooled turbocharger, and larger wheels. Not every vehicle Steve owned was a race car, sports car, or high-end luxury product. He also owned a funky 1952 Chevy 3800 series pickup complete with a camper shell. Steve also owned the 300 SEL 6.3, the fastest and most luxurious sedan in the world then. The 300 SEL 6.3 could go from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Steve was also a motorcycle lover. He reportedly owned around 130 motorcycles and over 18 cars during his lifetime. Steve understood fashion to a great extent. He invested heavily in his wardrobe as well as his wrist. He owns dozens of wristwatches and was even a brand ambassador of Hugh Air. One of his watches from the luxury brand is the Monaco Ref 1133, which was later auctioned for $2.2 million. Steve's luxurious lifestyle was cut short in 1978 after he developed a cough discovered to be pleuromesothelomia, a type of incurable cancer attributed to asbestos exposure. Due to his rare ailment, Steve was advised by his medical team not to opt for surgery, but he was adamant and had a risky surgery to remove one of his livers in Mexico. He died a few days after the surgery due to complications.